Welcome, friends, to Crazy Women Country, where women's voices matter. We bring you the greatest female voices in the music industry. From the artists, songwriters, and producers, to managers and executives, and all the women who make the music industry what it is today. Thank you for joining us. Welcome, friends, to another episode of Crazy Women Country. I'm Donna. And I'm Paula. And today we have Aubrey Wallet with us. How are you doing? Hey, thanks for having me. No worries. No worries. You always Our pleasure. Me. Yes, always nice <laughs> to have a fellow Floridian. Oh, yeah. Florida vibes That's all the time, no matter where I am. <laughs> awesome. Absolutely. Okay, so the first question is the most important question ever. Who is Aubrey? Oh, okay. Getting deep right off the bat. Um, <laughs> complicated female. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, girl brain. I no, I, uh, I was, long story short of my, I feel like resume is growing up. I grew up in a musical family and my dad played guitar. My mom played music, uh, played piano and sang and both of them sang at church. So that was kind of where I got my start in music. And um, I just was the only one out of the family that tried to pursue music for a living and pay my bills with it. My brother also sang. So my whole family kind of got me, I was surrounded by it. So I'd play at breweries and open mics in my hometown with my brother. Cause that was way cooler than playing with my parents. And, um, yeah, moved to Nashville went after high school. I went to Belmont University for two years. Um, and that's kind of where I fell in love with the songwriting. I, I've always, I wrote for fun as a kid and had a lot of feelings. And I felt like music was always my therapy for myself and my journaling mm-hmm. process. But when I got to Nashville, I realized, wow, like what a magical town of the songwriting and fell in love with that, but then missed Florida life in the beach. And that's what I was always writing about. So now I kind of go back and forth and I'm like the Florida Nashville chick, palm trees and cowgirl boots. Um, (laughs) So I'd say that's kind of describes me and my music is Florida girl in Tennessee (laughs) a little bit in my, in my heart. And um, yeah, a little mix of both. That's cool. I love that. I love that. <clears throat> Absolutely. And, you know, it's funny because you, you mentioned the whole palm trees. And I'm like, you know, when we moved to Florida to almost 15, 16 years ago, I was like, what do we do for Christmas? And we started decorating the palm trees, literally. I like that's the coolest it. thing to me. And so I have yes. to do that every year. That's yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah. That's I, cool. uh, I, I enjoy having the warm, warm weather. And we get like, you know, it's a little chilly. I'm in like the Tampa Bay area. So it does. People make fun of me because I was cold and I was way too cold in Nashville all the time. Honestly, that's what like led me back to Florida. I'm like, I'm writing way too many sad, gloomy songs because of all this rain and freezing cold weather. (laughs) Um, But it does get kind of cold. I get like two weeks of wearing my beanies and like heavy puffer jackets and stuff. So I get my I get my little like dose of my like Florida winter and I'm okay with that. (laughs) I love that. I love that. I do like the Florida winners too. (laughs) Oh gosh, wait, I just lost her. Oh, uh oh, we just lost her. Hold on, she'll be back. Technical difficulty, iPhones. You gotta love it. Internet problems. Welcome back. Yay. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. <laughs> but that's what makes us crazy. The little things, yeah. we accept those challenges of technical quirk. difficulties and whatnot and just enjoy them. Yeah. I know. They, my friend just called me and she probably thinks, she's probably thinking I gave her the the red button back to her. I'm like, no, I love you. Just right, not right now. I'll call that's you back. Funny. <laughs> that's funny. So, um, Tell us, I was reading through your profile and it said you worked with Dallas Davidson. What was that like? Oh, wow. It was probably the coolest experience. And I I was just kind of reflecting on it yesterday of 
sometimes in the moment you don't even realize how like big of a deal you're in because you're just like in it because it was kind of a wild experience. I was still in college when I started interning there. And that's what got me in the foot or my foot in the door on the business side. I was interning at record labels. And then that one I got, didn't even know I was interviewing for him because he had, he did on purpose. So people wouldn't like just interview with him because of his name, but it was just his publishing yeah. company. And so I went into it from like my 8 a.m. class and I was just interviewing wherever I could. And then once I got to his office, it was Red Akins, who that's Thomas Red's dad and the guy who wrote That Ain't My Truck in the 90s. And then Ben Hayslip is another one of the guys with Dallas Davidson. They're all they call themselves the Peach Pickers as like a writing group. And all of them were there that day that I interviewed. I saw all these number ones on the walls. And I literally was like looking super scrubby in my like sweatpants from my college class, 8 a.m. in the morning, thinking I'm just trying to like, I think they had told me you have to like interview today, this last day interview. And um, anyway, I was like, did I go to like musical songwriting heaven? Because how the heck am I here? And oh my gosh, I wish I would have like washed my hair and not put dry shampoo in it today. I'm like, <laughs> I was not looking my best. And I don't know, somehow maybe that worked that I looked like maybe almost like too real that I wasn't trying to impress anyone, but that was not on mm -hmm. purpose. <laughs> um, but I got to work with him. He ended up hiring me while I was still in school and then even after school. Um, so I got to do a lot of his like calendar for songwriting and, um, his wife is ex-wife now, but wife at the time was trying to be a country artist. So she was touring and I went around with her and her band to sell merchandise. And I learned that side of things. And so I learned, I learned the most I could have in just that like three year time span of like behind the curtain of the top mm -hmm. people in the industry. Cause he, you know, he wrote songs for Blake Shelton, Luke Bryan. Um, he was best buddies with Luke Bryan. And um, I got to go on farm tour with them also. And for me, the experience just showed a lot behind the curtain that it wasn't glamorous. It was hard work. He wrote every day and I got to see songs when they came from, thin air in my opinion and then went number one like Shelton would sing it at CMA Fest and I would see the crowd singing it back to him and then the number one party and I kind of saw like the full wheel of like the business and saw the craziness of it also <laughs> um but I don't know it made me realize the it's you know the possibilities of it I guess and then mm -hmm. he really taught me like the hard work that goes into songwriting and that you do have to become yeah. machine and like never stop and, and to not listen to anybody. Like so many people had a lot of opinions about some of the songs he was writing. Cause he was, uh, you know, it was like the bro country was kind of coming out and it was, even, there's so many opinions about it and I even have my own, but I love that he was like, I don't care. I'm writing these and I'm mm -hmm. laughing my way to the bank. You know, and he was like, I'm a songwriter. I'm going to write good songs. I'm going to write, you know, money songs or whatever, you know, category, yeah. I guess. Um, but it was, yeah, it was like the best experience I could have ever dreamed of. And um, I learned a lot what to do, a lot, a little bit what not to do, in my own opinion. <laughs> but I still left and I was like, you know, this is a crazy circus, but I think I'm going to find my own way to do this. All right. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. That's really good. That's amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. I think taking that kind of experience that just gives you the, you know, gain that inside look, you kind of know, okay, this is what I'm in for. This is great. Like you have yeah. to go in or not and, and you have to make those choices on your own. So it's right. nice that you get to do that. Yeah, it was, it was, it was super cool. All right. So uh, I know that we were talking about your EP a little bit before we started recording. So, and you mentioned that the uh, Lighthouse video is coming out. I'm so excited. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, Honest, my Honest project actually kind of went back to 2020 
was when I wrote a lot of these songs and the world shut down. And I, that's where I really started writing a lot, like on my own and virtually writing. And I was in Florida at the time I had moved back to Florida from Nashville full time. And I, I called it the honest project because I wrote this song um, honest with one of my friends from Nashville, Marla Morris. And I was just saying, you know, I think we all can experience in this world of like Instagram and social media, it's all, it's natural to like put out your perfectly curated reel. And even though I complain about that, it would also be awkward to put out a bunch of like really sad things all the time. Like I like being positive. So I like to share positive things, but it's really important to also be realistic with your friends, especially your friends and your circle. But then even online, it's important to say like, Hey, I, you know, I don't always look perfectly made up or, you know, just the authentic part of all of us. I think we all need to like remind each other that. So that's what that song was about. And then the other songs kind of embodied that lighthouse was about that year of kind of looking for hope. And I wrote it uh, with one of my friends, Erica Sunshine Lee. She's another great artist too. And, um, yeah, it's, I don't know, that one, which the music video will be out. I don't have the set date. It's probably out by the time this comes out, probably. But <laughs> um, that song was really special to me because I always have some sort of water theme in my music. And that was the perfect symbolism for hope and home and whatever that means for somebody. It could be church. It could be your mom, you know, it could be your spouse or your person, your best friend, like whatever, like brings you back home. That's what I felt like that song was about to keep you rooted. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, that's what else was on there. Boots on the Beach is also on there. And that described my life. I was going to ask you about Boots on the Beach. So tell us a little bit about that, the writing process, how the the idea even came about, because I mean, obviously Florida, we get the whole beach part, but you know. Explain us like what the thought was when when you came up with those lines. Yeah, honestly, I should think about the first question you asked was like, who is Aubrey? I'm like, boots on the beach. That's what I should just start with. (laughs) Because (laughs) I felt like after I tried so hard to fit in Nashville and I do love it. And it made me a lot who I am today, especially songwriting. But I grew up, I felt like, very fast there because I was naive when I went there for music and um, you know, I love both places, both places. And so that's where that song kind of stemmed from. And the title, ironically, we, my family goes to Bel Air beach, which I grew up pretty close to it. My aunt has a beach house there. And so every summer, all the cousins go there for 4th of July. And I don't, I don't know the exact year that it happened, but I always, since I was living in Nashville, I'd come home and I'd always book shows when I came home. So that would like cover my travel expenses. And then I'd have a place, my friends and family could come see me play. So I always played 4th of July because that's when I would come home from Nashville. And so I'd always wear boots after my show, like literally on the beach, we'd all like sitting around watching fireworks or they would say like, bring your guitar out on the beach. And, you know, so my family, my brother would like jam on a guitar also. My dad would. And my uh, uncle's friend, he was like, you know, we're all drinking, obviously, too. And he's like, <laughs> boots on the beach. He's like, look at that. And I was like, dude, you're right. I was like, I'm always like, boots on the beach. I, I That like stuck with me. And then he said it. He was like, you got to write a song about that. And he was like, kind of kidding. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, no, I really do. <laughs> I'm like, it took me, it took me a while to kind of figure out now I didn't want to make it cheesy. Sometimes when something seems like so perfectly titled, you're like, okay, don't mess this up, you know? And I overthink everything <laughs> in life anyway, but as a songwriter, I overthink songs also. <laughs> so it definitely took me a couple of years to kind of wrap my head around it. And then I brought it to one of my friends in Nashville also that I write a lot with. And he thought, cause I was kind of, I brought up the idea and I'm like, still working on house. Can be cool. And I brought it up and they're like, dude, that's awesome. I'm like, okay, all right, let's run with it. Let's go. So anyway, that's, it's one of my favorite songs that I wrote to kind of describe 
loving both places. And Mm -hmm. I do feel like when I wear my, I wear my cowgirl boots in Florida and people make comments about it. And I'm like, then once they hear my story that I lived in Nashville full time and I still go back there, I lived there full time for seven years. I'm like, it's like imprinted in my soul, especially musically. Mm -hmm. So it kind of makes me feel like that makes me like both Florida and Nashville. So that's awesome. Absolutely. Bit of both. I'm flip flops or no shoes usually most days. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, and that's the funny thing is that's most like obviously Florida people, they're like, why are you wearing boots? And that's, I get that all the time. And I'm like, I think <laughs> I've like tried to play barefoot and I feel, I don't know, that's like the Aubrey that like doesn't play. I'm also clumsy. So I feel like I step on like stupid things when I don't wear shoes. So <laughs> I'm like, the boots it is, also it is protect Florida. There's feet. lots of bugs too, you know. I know. The <laughs> boots like, protect and me. And a spider. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I think now it's kind of become my thing. If I don't wear cowgirl boots or like closed toed shoes, even my friends notice they're like that you never wear like sandals or you're never bare feet, like when you're playing. And I'm mm-hmm. like, I can't. I don't know why. It's like a part of me now. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So I love it. <laughs> because the same way, like when we used to work like work in an office, it was always closed toed shoes, you know, like you couldn't and then so yeah, you get into those. Yeah. Your things. Yeah. It's my thing now. It's my lucky. I'm also like kind of superstitious. So that's my that's- I feel like super grounded and ready to kick some butt when I wear my cowgirl boots. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> Don't mess with Aubrey. You never know. Yes. Yep. <laughs> cool. really so would you like cool. to do our 13 crazy questions now? All right. I've heard about these. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm very <laughs> excited. So I told you. Bring a buzzer or something if I take too long. I like it. it's hard to I will work on finding the buzzer sound while we're yeah. starting. <laughs> All right, let's go. Okay. So if you're having a bad day, what is your feel good TV stroke film? Oh, TV. All right. I've always loved Friends growing up. That's kind of my, that's my go to if I need to like turn something on. Awesome. Awesome. Friends is at top of the list at the moment. It really is. I love it. I love I lo- Jennifer Aniston. I'm like, who didn't want to be her? Who still doesn't want to be like her? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh. Okay. Tell me, if you had a pet parrot, what would you teach it to say? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> That's kind of funny. I never never thought about that. Um Hmm. I would tell it to like hype me up. So I'd make it sing like, go Aubrey, go Aubrey, go Aubrey. <laughs> I love that. That is very cool. <laughs> I, like, I like like a hype. My husband's kind of my hype man sometimes. And I like, I got to be like, press play. Let's go, babe. Like, hype me up. Come on. <laughs> I'm spiraling. So if I had a parrot, I would definitely do that. <laughs> Perfect. I love that. <laughs> oh, okay. If you could write with anyone, who would it be? Ooh. Oh, gosh. Mm. Oh, that is so tough. Um, hmm. There's so many people. As a artist and someone I'd like to like learn from, I think I would pick Cheryl Crow. Mm. As a That's writer awesome and artist choice. and just getting those couple hours to hang out with her. <laughs> I yeah. would pick that. That'd I would awesome. pick her. That'd be awesome. That is awesome for sure. Okay, finish okay. this line. Today my favorite song is Oh um oh gosh. <laughs> you know what's really sad is TikTok songs are so like stuck in your head. In the one, this isn't my favorite <laughs> song, but like today, what's stuck in my head is the 
You're my little boot thing. You're my little boot. That's all I know. I don't even know the words, but that song is always stuck in my head. And I, it is like a hype me up song. So I kind of like, I like the jam. I let it stay in my head, but I don't know. That's all I got stuck in my head for a quick answer. I, I do love Zach Bryan. I should say real answer, Zach Bryan, all of his songs. But Loom is one I've been like listening to and like trying to learn on guitar lately. That's my real answer. Real answer. But real answer. Final wait, answer. Wait, 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 you're my little boo thing stuck in my head. <laughs> uh, okay. If your life was a reality show, what would it be called? If my life was one? Oh, wow. Oh, gosh. Uh, where is Aubrey? That's what it was called. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, yeah, I don't know. I'm always, uh, whether it's in my, I'm either head in the clouds or I'm, I was that friend that my college roommate would have to be like, where did Aubrey go? <laughs> I was a social butterfly. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Oh, if you were arrested, what would you be arrested for? Oh my god! <laughs> oh, this um. Oh gosh, that is a terrible question. <laughs> um, what, not to go into details, I, but I mean, like skinny dipping in the ocean, right? Like, okay, yeah, that's you know, good. You I'm can like, something oh my simple. Gosh, what would I it doesn't be? have to be, you know, like yeah, right. like robbing a bank or you know, uh, or murder. Murder later. Yeah, no, <laughs> that would not be. It would be something stupid. In my luck, I have surprisingly really bad luck. I don't. I follow rules, so then the times that I do break rules, I definitely get in trouble. Um. So yeah, it would be going past like a "do not enter" sign or something. <laughs> I would get in trouble for it. <laughs> no one else would. But I would on the one, one way. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I would. Uh, I'm always the one. I do one thing that's crossing the line, and yeah, I get in trouble. No one else, though. My husband, he breaks rules all the time, never gets in trouble. <laughs> Me, <laughs> I tell him myself. <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Um, which artist would you love to do a duet with? Ooh. Hmm. I mean, I don't know. That might go back to Cheryl Crow. I I have a major girl crush on Cheryl Crow. <laughs> I just love her. And I want to age like her, too. I want to be her. And I want to know her aging secrets. Yes. We all want to know that one. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. 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 <laughs> well. If we were to make a, sorry, I have a dog jump trying to jump up, but she's like, I'm scared it's lightning and thundering, mommy. Um, oh. <laughs> okay, come here. I got you. Say hi. You want to say hi? Aww. Say hi. Say hi. Distract the room. Hey. Hey. Oh. Hello. Hey, oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, okay, I baby. Love here. I got you. This is adorable. Oh, this is Lucy. Lucy. <laughs> sorry for the prompt guest experience. I love Here's it. Hi. Hi, Lucy. Oh, many oh. My girl. I was like, where's my dog? He's probably hiding. He's probably scared. Of... Is it thundering up your way, too? It's not, but uh, his, uh, his, he gets kind of sad when my husband leaves, so he gets kind of sad. Aww. But Aww. I know. I'm like, yo, I'm here. Yeah, I'm so right? fun. Mama's here. Look how cool we can, we can hang out. Stay up. <laughs> he <Exactly>. doesn't care. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> oh, so if we make a movie about your life, who would you want to play you? Oh. Oh, that's a great question. Um, hmm. I do love Jennifer Lawrence. Um, I always I also used to she's the girl in um, people used to say it, that I looked like her the girl the best friend of 
Hannah Montana, the blonde. I don't know. I don't know her name, but I feel like one of those. That would be cool. That would be cool. That would be awesome. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you owned a bar, what would you call it? Oh, um, Saltwater Gypsy, for sure. So that's one of my songs. And then that would, I mean, that's like a dream of mine to be able to open up a bar called that. And I would have um, like juice. I'd have like a bar, like a healthy bar. Like you can do like juice stuff there and then a regular bar. And then you can also combine them. If you're like dry January folks, I would like have like little juice mocktail things. And then you have the actual alcohol side. Or you can do the healthy juice. I found this on Vegas. They have this. Of course, Vegas would. You like have a healthy green juice and you like have tequila in it too. And you're like, look, I'm being healthy, but you're getting a good buzz. The buzz. Yeah. <laughs> that would be salt or gypsy bar. <laughs> healthy, but that. get a good buzz. <laughs> I am in. Let like me help make some bar. cocktails. <laughs> I know. We're going to have the crazy women country cocktail. I mean, you know. Oh, okay, I, I was making that. a sparkle tea for New Year's and I did sparkle tea and then I did um, some tequila and I'm like, it was too much tequila. So I had some orange juice and some, I was like this whole like process I was doing. I'm like, oh my God, Love I haven't done this that. in years, but yeah, it was a whole process. Love it cool. though. Being, being your own bartender is best. Just keep adding. <laughs> yeah. Don't taste like you want it. Like that should taste like yeah. I want it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this, little that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> no. Okay. So. If I came to you and said, Aubrey, I need to hide a dead body. Do you know a good place? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I would. <laughs> I'm too scared of that stuff. I would probably <laughs> run away. And I would say, I can't be a part of this. I don't know. <laughs> but don't go in. I would, not, I would not be the good friend to confide in. I'd be like, why did you tell me this? <laughs> Actually, I don't um, think you should tell Aubrey. So you're you're chill now, everyone. <laughs> somewhere, yeah, somewhere in like uh, Alligator Alley. I feel like they don't check that place in Florida. Inland Florida, somewhere, yeah, Alligator Alley. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my best guess. Wrap it with some chicken. <laughs> Maybe the gators will help. No. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it, it'll go away eventually. I'm like, ew. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> what scares you the most? Oh. Um. Hmm. I mean, I do hate like bugs. Uh like spiders really freak me out. Um if we're talking about that. <laughs> uh I'm like in life, <laughs> I get there's also like fun Aubrey and then I get deep conversation Aubrey. <laughs> <laughs> um and then yeah I, I just like don't like to regret anything so that's like a life fear of mine <laughs> live with no just regrets keep, just keep living it stay away yeah, from spiders and live with no regrets <laughs> <laughs> that works that works and then you live in Florida, so the spiders are just like, you know, every once in a while, I don't know if you go to the middle of the state, but you have those big banana spiders. They're really cool yeah. to look at from a distance, but I'm like, dude, the oh, thing's yeah. bigger than my head. Like, Yeah, no, yeah. no, I can't. No. That's scary. I don't do well with that. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. I'm not a spider girl either. Mm -mm. No, I can't. I don't know. Too many crawlers. <laughs> <laughs> <Too many legs. laughs> oh, tell us if you could have a lifetime supply of anything what would it be oh, popcorn i'm obsessed with popcorn skinny pop or boom chicka pop those are my two go-to brands oh, I, nice. I, have, awesome I have a popcorn addiction <laughs> i always i actually just got a new um boom chicka pop popcorn bag so I was like craving. I like the purple, salty, sweet one on Boom Chicka Pop. I like cheddar, white cheddar also. But yeah, looking for a sponsorship one day. <laughs> <laughs> Tequila and popcorn. That's what I want in the supply. <laughs> that's all Tequila I need. That's all okay, great. Right. So okay. there's a zombie apocalypse. I'm just going to hang out with you because you're going to have the two yeah. things that I like too. So yeah, I got popcorn and tequila. And then a drink to drink the worries away. 
I love it. Okay, <laughs> the last question. The last question. You survived. Um, I did. An animal, what would you be? Oh. Um. Hmm. I feel like. I mean, I feel like dogs live the best life as a good house pet. Um, but yeah. I feel like dolphins are pretty like badass in the ocean. Mm -hmm. And they like swim and jump, they're cruising and you know, people yeah. pay to Cruise. float in the water to watch them and then oh, there's another there's <laughs> hi. <laughs> So there, there's lightning and thunder she's like oh my goodness i can't do it mommy hold me oh yeah i mean being a <laughs> being a pet dog with to someone who loves their dog like that's that's the best thing to be i think <laughs> dogs live great right? lives spirit animal i feel like i'd love to be a, a dolphin be cool because they're like dolphin. cruising the water and everybody's kind of scared of them not like, because they can like beat like a shark. shark. They can, like, they can yeah. yeah. I mean, that's pretty, that's like the most yeah. badass thing you can do. That <laughs> is, totally. Oh, yeah. So, I love it. yeah. Anyway. So tell us, what does the rest of 2024 hold? Lots more gigs, songwriting. What's happening? Yeah, definitely. I've got, um, I'm always writing for new projects. I do have, I'll have a song coming out that I play a lot live and I wrote it for my husband last year. I got married last year. And um, so I'll be releasing that It's called Fish in the Sea. And then I'll probably have another couple songs that I'll release a single throughout the year. So I'm excited. Yeah. It'll be really fun. Then playing shows, traveling. I'm going to Texas in a little bit. And then um, I might be going out. I know I'll be in Idaho for a little bit. And then I last year, I got to go out west for the first time in Washington. So I might be going back out there in the summer. So I'm excited. Yeah, it'll be fun. You'll have, you you have to let me know when you're travel. out there because... Oh, um, we'll be traveling out west this summer. So, yeah, maybe I can catch up with you cool. out there, too. Oh, my gosh. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I definitely will. That'd be really cool. That'd be very cool. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. We'll have to do an in-person interview. Love it. I'm, I'm so down. <laughs> with tequila and popcorn. With tequila. <laughs> and, and maybe puppies. Tequila right? and popcorn. And dog, yes, and dogs. Yes, please. Dogs are always welcome. <laughs> oh. I love it. I love it. It has been a pleasure having you on, Miss Aubrey, and you are welcome back Aww. anytime. Thanks. Definitely. Thank you, guys. Well, thanks for chatting with me and making me no think worries. deeply about what I'm going to do when I have someone asked me to bury a body. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. It might come up. You never know. You never know. 2024. Maybe it's crazy. I hope maybe I we don't. need to find sharks. You know, maybe we need to find <laughs> sharks and take out to the ocean. I don't know. I'm just. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Never know. Be prepared. Be prepared. <laughs> Always. Always. You know, be prepared. We have to prepare for hurricanes here, so we might as well prepare for that right away, right? Yeah, this is true. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure having you on. You're welcome well, back Thank anytime. you so much. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you, friends, for joining us for another episode. Make sure you check out the links in the description, and we'll see you next time on Crazy Women Country. Thank you. Adios. Bye. If you enjoyed today's episode of Crazy Women Country, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Be sure to click the subscribe button for new interviews weekly. And thank you, friends, for joining us today on Crazy Women Country, where women's voices matter. <laughs>